Good morning, students, and welcome to the fifth presentation for ELD 1501 Early Learning and Development Areas. I am your lecturer, Mrs. A. Karam, and you can email me on ecarrier1 at unisa.ac.za. So we'll be looking at learning unit four today. So the purpose of this presentation is to go to the outcomes of learning unit four and give you a brief introduction to help you become familiar with the content of learning unit four. OK, so we're looking at learning unit four, uh, which is reflections on the pros and cons of structuring early learning and care in the South African context using experiences from the field. So at the end of this unit, you need to be able to complete case studies and reflective exercises to illustrate the value and the pitfalls of a structured approach to early care and learning. You also need to develop creative pieces using specific criteria to advocate for quality early care and learning. OK, so let's look at the introduction. Um, so we're looking at in unit three, we basically learned about, uh, you know, early learning areas of South Africa and India and also compared and contrasted key elements of the respective ECE curriculums. So both curricula, you know, underscore the value of having a national ECE curriculum for children to prepare them for formal schooling and lifelong learning, as well as contributing in the long run uh, to equity. So in this unit, we're exploring the value and pitfalls relating to structured early learning. Uh, case studies from South Africa are also explored as examples of practice. We also looking at the this unit also uses um, you know, quality, a quality framework focusing on the process and structural factors in the context of unpacking these uh, these outcomes. So when we're looking at structured play, uh, structured play is basically uh, generally adults that providing uh, direction and a specific task in order for children to learn a new skill. Um, structured play is also typically uh, a physical or cognitive brain skill activity. And during structured uh, play, children are introduced to new ideas and opportunities, you know, enhancing their development and learning abilities, such as setting the foundations for learning to focus, uh, pay attention, take turns and, uh, um, and follow instructions at the end of the day. So when we look at unstructured play, uh, you know, it means open ended or creative free play with endless possibilities. So it is a, it is child led and directed and it doesn't require an outcome or product. You know, playing in the fantasy free construction with blocks, painting on a, a blank paper or getting creative with various recycled materials. So when we look at unstructured uh, play, you know, it provides children with experiences in creativity, imagination, decision making, risk taking and the development of the of their overall emotional and social skills. Uh, so you can see both are equally important in a child's uh, life. So let's look at structured early learning. Uh, you know, a growing body of research recognizes that ECE contributes to a wide range of benefits, including social and economic benefits, better child well-being and learning outcomes as foundation uh, as the foundation for lifelong learning. So more uh, this is where you'll get more equitable outcomes and reduction of poverty and increased intergenerational uh, social mobility so these positive benefits are directly related to the quality of ece definitions of quality are also important uh, to know and it differs across you know countries and across different stakeholder groups depending on the beliefs values um, you know a country's socioeconomic context and the needs of the community of users so we're looking at, um, you know, when we talk about quality EC, we are we are too broad. Um, basically, the broad categories, the process quality and the structural quality. But we're looking at process quality, content quality and structural quality. Uh, so remember, when it comes to process quality, you know, this is concerned about children's daily experiences, you know, while they're interacting with teachers, peers and materials. And in, it in basically encompasses the social, emotional, physical and instructional aspects of children's activities and interactions with their teachers, peers and materials that are seen as the proximal determinants of a child's development. When we look at content quality, you know, it specifically refers to the substance of what is being named example the curriculum that we're using you know staff quality are the way um, staff involve children and stimulate that interaction with and the and between children um, as well as staff uh, scaffolding strategies you know such as the guiding modeling and questioning the young learners when we look at structural quality it also refers to the so-called um 
uh, regulable, uh, more distal aspects of early childhood education, ECE. So such as, you know, things like registration status, group size, child to teacher ratio, um, also looking at the teacher's qualifications. So structural quality is partly determined by legislation, policy and funding. And they also this is also a major factor in the mic macroeconomic costs of ECE. So when we're looking at structural features, you know, they consider to be important preconditions for the process quality and which in turn is the most strongly related to child development, well-being and learning. So it's very important that you go through this um, uh, this uh, section. You know, EC quality is commonly defined by structural and process characteristics that are thought to nurture, you know, child development. And these two areas are uh, obviously linked. So from a research point of view, structural quality is most used as it is easier to determine elements being measured. You know, example, the staff, child ratio, things like that. Um, when you look at structural learning environments, you know, they may expose children to situations where specific skills can be nurtured. But the nature of these predetermined activities may limit the opportunity for individual expression and, you know, experience of unexpected uh, outcomes that are necessary for creative discovery. So now we're looking at structural early learning, you know, structure in this regard may include routines in terms of daily schedules, learning to communicate, developing social skills and emotional maturity, the curriculum frameworks, child outcomes, physical environment. So all of this, uh, these sections are quite lengthy in the study guide. You need to go through and understand what are routines, daily schedules, you know, the, uh, these are very, extremely important to children. They provide structure, a sense of security, you know, you know in normality and, in, and comfort in knowing what to expect, you know. Uh, so structured child uh, child care programs are exactly that structured. You know they help children get used to establishing routines. You know whether it be around eating, playing, sleeping, and other activities, which significantly assist with bridging at home routines expected. You know in terms of uh, brushing their teeth and hair. You know. Um, so they also assist children to develop these important healthy routine habits as they grow. And this links to uh, the content of, for example, the elders. When we look at daily schedules, uh, you know, this is a daily program uh, that teachers use as a tool, you know, to reinforce routines. And it's normally prominently displayed generally as a poster. Um, you know, there is um, to demonstrate that they structure to what happens in the in the classroom from the time the child arrives to their departure. So it's important that you create this as a teacher as well. As a teacher, you should follow a daily program, you know, and themes that are changed each week. One activity does not necessarily flow into the next, you know, activities are broken up. So there is balance between learning and play time before rest time. So. Uh, just you need to decide what to use and what the available resources that you have in the classroom. When you look at um, learning to communicate, you know, structured programs have more teacher directed communication and less of the voice of the child. So pedagogy is basically adult directed and early communication development plays a um, you know, an important role in children's learning at every stage and set the foundations for their future. So children learn to express themselves clearly. They build that positive relationships with the educators and other children and learn not only the skills for communicating, but also for listening. And so this may be useful for certain situations. For example, when the child's language is not the same as the main language in the class, you know, you as a teacher may provide choices for activities so that the, the basically the child feels comfortable to participate in what they want to do or can do, you know. Um, so all of these are important things to consider in a classroom. Uh, sometimes there's uh, an important need to uh, code switch to the home languages. So uh, when you read to them um, in English and translate it in their home language, you know, if possible, even in terms of instructions, look at developing social skills and emotional uh, maturity. So social interactions and the way children learn to deal with situations go hand in hand. In this type of structure, you know, outcomes are emphasized, learning to treat other children with respect, kindness and consideration, as well as being aware of their wants and needs, you know, will basically pave a path to their ability to uh, positively adjust to their new surroundings and social settings. And so there's a variety of activities and settings that are facilitated by EC sites that give ch uh, children exposure to different situations and help them prepare 
uh, you know, for the transition into school. So there are expectations and rules for children to follow and um, and develop in most cases by you as a teacher, you know, who explains and demonstrates. And learning these values may not be easily learned in an unstructured activity. So we can see that stru uh, structured learning is also very important. When you look at curriculum frameworks, you know, most programs have some type of guidelines, philosophies or curriculum that helps them with content to teach children. In structured programs, you know, there is normally a prescriptive program which is followed. As a teacher, you need to follow through on each aspect. You know, there is no or less flexibility. Example, you know, changing activities due to weather, you know, um, uh, some teachers with minimal training may find uh, this formal approach useful as a guide to facilitating children's activities and give you that sense of confidence, you know, when you're teaching and uh, you're able to report back on expected outcomes. Unfortunately, sometimes the outcomes may become more important than the process. You know, this is a, a, a very big challenge in the classrooms nowadays. nowadays. So let's look at, um, you know, read more about this in the... Um, a study guide, let's look at you know, child outcomes. So structured programs play a major role in the emotional and academic development of children, as well as the preparation for their transition you know, into schooling. So they, prov uh, they provide a platform for development of foundational skills you know, in terms of problem solving, socializing, fi fine motor and sensory skills, and a positive approach to learning that will go on to benefit them as they grow. So there is normally some test done to show evidence that the child meets prescribed school readiness outcomes. And this makes the assumption on record that the child is ready to basically start a formal schooling. OK, so let's look at the physical environment. You know, the way the physical environment is designed and configured influences how children feel, act and behave. So. As a teacher, you need to consider that your physical environment allows growth and development, you know, through activities and materials um, in materials, uh, you know, in defined play areas. So room arrangement for play activity plays an important role in children's social and language interactions. Uh, when it comes to pure, uh, poorly designed play uh, spaces, you know, it can cause major disruptions and negative uh, social interactions among children or between children and the teacher. Um, so one needs to remember this type uh, uh, that ideal setting, um, you know, may not be available for children from previously disadvantaged areas in South Africa. And one needs to be flexible in options, you know, how you um, create that space for play and, you know, materials, um, make materials available and be sensitive to the needs of the children. So in the environment includes uh, areas, uh, should include areas where children can explore, you know, the objects within the space. And the adult supervision is always necessary to ensure that no child seriously harms themselves. Um, so let's look at um, the next uh, slide where we talk of play-based learning approaches and the importance for children's holistic development. Now we're looking at the pedagogy of play, you know. The pedagogy of play refers to a systematic approach to practice, you know, playful learning and teaching, you know, creating and oper uh, operationalizing such a pedagogy requires a culture, you know, where play playfulness is actually celebrated, examined, you know, made visible and better understood as a powerful tool for learning. So bringing play into a central role um, you know, in a in a site entails creating that culture that values the core values of play, you know, in terms of taking risks, allowing them to make mistakes, exploring new ideas and experiencing that joy and learning from these experiences. When we look at play based teaching and learning, um, you know, this approach is uh, being promoted by the DBE. You know, it conceptualizes play as existing on a continuum and it's defined by the relative activity, you know, choice and autonomy of children and teachers. You know, while different educational researchers use different terms, you know, uh, playful learning uh, basically um, covers free or child-led play, guided play in which adults scaffold child-led play as well as games, you know, in which adults can design set rules and scaffold the play with a learning objective at the end of the day. 
When we look at playful learning, you know, it promotes physical, cognitive and social emotional outcomes that are essential for our learners school readiness and academic success at the end of the day. You know, play is a vehicle for helping children make progress towards their learning goals. It also builds skills they use throughout their lives. You know, we, when it comes to problem solving, interacting, negotiating with others, you know, processing emotions, taking risks, uh, being flexible, being resilient and self-directed at the end of the day. Uh, when we're looking at different theaters, you know, according to Bruna, you know, play can be seen as a main opportunity for children to take risks without the fear of failure. You know, his definition also proposes that creative creativity and play activities are closely related. That is, if you know, if children explore and experiment in their play, the possibilities for creative outcomes are greatly enhanced without the fear of failure. So, for example, a toddler playing with Play-Doh can creatively explore and experiment freely as there is no right or wrong way to create and mold with this material. When we look at uh, Vakatsky, you know, he um, uh, uh, offered additional insight into childhood play. For Vakatsky, you know, uh, imaginative play is the main focus for general development of the child. He also suggested that we must challenge our, our children, you know, to increase um, to increasingly higher levels of functioning, what he referred to as a zone of proximal development, which you can read more about. When we look at DBE um, and play-based pedagogy, DBE is advocating for strong play-based pedagogy. And this is seen in the partnership with Lego Foundation. You know, uh, the Department of Basic Education has adopted play-based learning as a fundamental principle. So working with the Lego uh, fund, uh, Foundation, you, you know, UNICEF and various stakeholders active in the ECD space, the South African government is supporting policies to bring play-based learning into the classrooms and ECE facilities nationwide. So the partners want to understand how best to unlock the power of play, to learn and invest in the future during the earlier stages of children's development. Can this be the future of ECE in South Africa using a blended approach with play as a key pedagogy? It's something to think about. So in uh, let's look at unstructured play. In unstructured play, you know, children have agency and control over their experience. Play should involve some degree of agency, enabling children to take an active role and ownership, you know, in their experiences by choosing play with the things uh, with the things uh, like they like to do. So agency is when children develop skills in all areas of development, you know, whether it be intellectual, social, emotional, and physical, um, you know, apply concepts of quantity, science, and movement to real life. I like the, um, you know, the big C's, how many uh, will I need to cover uh, this part of my picture? Um, they also need to reason in a logical, analytical uh, manner by acting on objects and develop creativity and explore aesthetics and artistry. You know, I wonder what will happen if I mix these colors together. So these are all things that, um, you know, we need to encourage with our young um, learners. Uh, remember, uh, very understandably, parents want their children to be in safe, uh, to be safe when they send their children to ECE sites. But this can mean that safety takes an undue priority over anything else. Um, you know, this often leads to avoidance of any opportunity to take physical uh, risk or for fear, or you know, of some level, or you know, you worried, be it as a teacher or nervousness of a parents. You know, risk taking is an essential part of creativity and creative development. And the way children take to swings, jumping outdoors reveals their inner pa passion for risk taking. So unfortunately, not having this opportunity takes away the opportunity to develop that confidence and creativity as children, you know, and nurturing towards adulthood. This topic is something that can be discussed at parents' meetings as well. For teachers, uh, ideas can be advanced through staff development or online training, amongst um, others. Okay, so now we're looking at um, teacher professional development. Um, so remember, uh, when it comes to... Uh, to the judgment when we basically judging, you know, the quality of the values of our teachers. So children's uh, development outcomes are often used as the most important dependent variable in assessing high quality ECE. But this leaves a debate open on which development outcomes should be studied. In striving to meet uh, the quality indicators, teachers may become so focused on teaching to meet quality indicators, and they may pay a less attention to facilitating learning and encouraging play and child-directed activities. 
So teachers level of education and participation in training is a better predictor of program quality than other factors, you know, such as child staff ratios or group size, things like that. Um, there is a strong argument, you know, for ongoing professional development to fill in the knowledge and skills that staff may be lacking or require. So teachers uh, who lack knowledge on contemporary issues that advance children's development may be uncomfortable in structured uh, settings. Um, you know, ECE requires the engagement of a more knowledgeable teacher, you know, that is able to interpret the children's action to support them in verbally expressing their wishes and ideas, to take into account their views, to involve them in the process of sharing materials and to explain the actions offered. So remember, professional early childhood teachers who are aware of and comprehend developmental theories of play, understand pedagogical structuring and unstructured activities are better prepared, you know, to use play as a context for instruction and assessment. They also understand the importance of play in social, emotional, cognitive, physical, and motor domains of development. Therefore, it's extremely important uh, teachers uh, that teachers as of young children have a strong academic background on the value of play to best evaluate pro problems and offer appropriate support to children who have a hard time playing such um, as children with physical disabilities as well. You know, everything needs to be considered. In the quest for promoting professional self-development in ECE, you know, um, a, uh, a South African NGO developed a resource kit to help ECD practitioners reflect on their own practice in relation to the issues of quality and context. And this is the quality reflection tool, the QRT, which captures four elements as noted on the screen, knowledge about your profession, skills, work practices, and behaviors, uh, work, uh, and feelings and attitudes about one's work. So the expectation are that practitioners uh, could reflect on their own experiences, you know, and considering what they know or don't know about their work helps them find ways in which they can develop their professional practice. They thus get a deeper understanding of their strengths and can plan to improve on areas of weaknesses in any areas identified. Okay, so now we moving on to um, uh, some South African studies on quality, you know, in terms of interventions, read about, uh, uh, you need to basically read about this, um, the oversight, mentoring and on-site support required, what are the key gaps, what is qualification, the need for quality assurance, look at the Department of Social Development, what are they doing, the ECD policy, what does it say, uh, commonly accepted dimensions of quality framework. These are all important, uh, you know, when going through this uh, unit as well. Remember, there is no uh, national data on quality of early learning programs in South Africa. Um, and numerous interventions to improve the quality of early learning program are the uh, delivery offered by both government, you know, through its, uh, through its NCF training and by NGOs. Um, so when we're looking, in looking at the evaluation of the impact of these uh, interventions, while much emphasis is placed on, you know, practitioner qualifications, qualifications alone are not sufficient to make a difference. So this is where the oversight, mentoring and on-site uh, on support, on support uh, is required, you know, um, from suitably qualified personnel. Uh, personnel are central to the quality improvement and successful uh, program delivery. You know, whether or not children realize the benefits of enrollment in high quality early learning program is heavily dependent on, you know, the duration and intensity of the exposure to the program. Um, you know, when you're looking at, um, when you're looking in discussing quality and structure, the issue of the purpose of outcomes in ECE also comes up, you know. Are we preparing our children for primary school or should it be that the primary school should prepare for the children coming to ECE? This is known as qualification. And this drive uh, can drive ECE sites to adopt practices that are usually more related to primary school, such as, you know, higher staff pupil ratios, long hours away from home, you know, more teacher directed pedagogies, greater attention to academic content and less playtime. This is uh, um, is mostly observed. Um, and when we look at the need for quality assurance, you know, it's recognized in the National Integrated ECD Policy, which notes that monitoring and evaluation are essential to ensure cost-effective ECE system that provides the quality, accessibility, and timely services to in infants and young children. And then we're looking at the Department of Social Development, you know, 
they currently leading a project to design a quality assurance and support system for early learning programs. And the objectives are to give expression to the priorities and principles of national integrated ECD policy. And they expected to draw strongly, you know, from local and international research and leading practices. When we look at ECD policy, you know, they recognize that ECD program registration is not sufficient condition to guarantee the level of quality required to drive good child outcomes, the, uh, though it remains an important milestone. Um, and also when we look at commonly accepted dimensions of quality, you know, it includes structurally accepted indicators such as the physical se uh, setting, the teacher qualification we mentioned, the child ratio among others. And there is a recognition that the process quality indicators such as mediated teacher, uh, child interaction, active play with concrete materials, you know, the holistic curriculum, you know, these are among the others have shown to contribute to better child outcomes. OK, so there's quite a bit of information that you need to reflect on there. Um, and now we're just going to uh, basically reflect on this unit, you know, um, in terms of what do children benefit most? You know, children benefit from both structured and unstructured and pedagogically uh, structuring of activities by teachers. You know, young children with, uh, with special needs um, especially uh, benefit from structured play to help them fill the gaps, you know, uh, for skills they need to develop. Um, and this is this is why structured play can promote collaboration and teamwork, while unstructured play can also encourage creativity and imagination. So you can see how equally important they are. Unstructured play is actually necessary to cultivate that creativity and nurture a child's sense of self and emotional development. While structured play, um, you know, uh, play conversely teaches children how to function in a group and adhere to rules and emphasizes a sense of the group. So it is important for uh, caring adults to be aware of um, of how children use both pe uh, periods of time, you know, participation rates, the social pitfalls, uh, accomplishments, um, and children need time for unstructured play. Um, both are necessary for early childhood education. And when we look at what are teachers' roles in enacting a range of balance of age-appropriate pedagogies, you know, it involves deliberate, purposeful, and thoughtful decision-making and actions to promote children's innate drive, you know, for inde independent learning. So as a teacher, you need to put uh, to give careful consideration, uh, you know, to professional development and also, uh, you know, uh, mentoring teachers as a way forward to promoting quality ECE. And secondly, the NCF is a national curriculum document. It needs more needs to be actually done to advocate and teach on the implementation of this curriculum in different contexts, even giving consideration to integrating it in the various training qualifications and skills programs. OK, so there's a lot of, you know, activities that you need to do, you know, and feedback for the thinking teacher that will give you a good understanding of this learning unit. Um, so we've basically come to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, in this unit, we explored the pros and cons of structured and unstructured early learning. And we got to know more about the purpose of the uh, purpose of quality ECE and its impact on early learning. We also explored some South African studies on quality and appraised, uh, you know, some examples of ECE sites on the ground. So we noted we noted as a positive milestone that government is planning to set up a national quality system for ECE that will regulate the ECE field and that will also impact on more children, um, you know, accessing subsidies and thereby improving ECE provision. Uh, so we hope that with this knowledge and your practice uh, teaching, you will be ready to practice your teaching with a new lens. All the best students.